The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning in Europe and good afternoons for those in, in China. My name is Javier Baud, and I'm the Business Development Advisor at the EU SME Center. Today with us, we also have Irene Liu from the communications team helping us with technical issues. And But before we, we start with this EU SME Center web seminar, we're going to uh, take care of the, the platform. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, you will have a console where you can ask uh, questions uh, to us. We definitely encourage uh, to, uh, to send you uh, questions. You can do that during the presentation, and at the end, we will also have a Q&A section. So uh, the EU SME Center help uh, European companies to get ready for China. The EU SME Center is a project uh, fully uh, founded by the European Union, and we help uh, European SMEs to export China, but also like develop, maintain, and establish uh, commercial activities in the Chinese market, which include also uh, investment. We provide free, confidential information and advice and practical support. Uh, our center is divided in four, four main, uh, four main uh, departments. One is business development, legal, standard and conformities, and human resources and training. We, inform, we provide information and advice, and we will reply your inquiries. We uh, publish a lot of reports and, uh, and guidelines about the, the interesting topics in China, and we also do training and webinars like, like today. We do have two databases, one for exhibitions and trade shows in, in China, and we also have a database on service providers. These are companies that can provide uh, services in China. Some of our other support services, the hot desk, we provide a free space for companies for a short period of time, no more than two weeks, so companies can come and physically stay at our center to do their market research. We also are engaged in some matchmaking and networking events, both in Europe and in China. So uh, today's uh, webinar, we have two speakers. One is uh, Eric Han from the Northern Technology Exchange Market, which is the Europe Enterprise Network uh, contact point for Northeast uh, China. And we also have uh, Mr. Von Lindemann, from a regional manager of Jember Chamber in Tianjin. So uh, today, a webinar about Tianjin is one, uh, the first one of a series of webinars we are doing on, on different uh, cities in, in China. Uh, China is a very big country, very different, so uh, sometimes it's perceived as a single, as a single market in, in, in Europe. And we want to uh, emphasize that this is not true, and uh, we want to uh, highlight the opportunities and challenges in different areas uh, in China. So with no further ado, I will uh, leave the floor to Mr. Eric Han to uh, give us a, an overview of what they're doing. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Eric Han. Uh, today, I'm very pleased to be here to attend this webinar today. Uh, okay, uh, I will start my presentations. Uh, I work in the Northern Technology Exchange Market, uh, short for NTEM. Uh, we are focused on the international technology transfer field. Uh, before I joined into the NTEM, I worked in the international companies uh, in the operational management and also for a local venture capital companies in Tianjin as invest, investment managers, uh, which gave me a solid experience in both management and the industry. Uh, okay, this uh, is my brief information. Okay, uh, next I will introduce the Northern Technology Exchange Market the consulting of EEN Northeast China Centers. Uh, here we can see the map of China and uh, we, uh, we focus on this circle. Here's uh, Tianjin, Beijing and Hebei and uh, the bigger circle is uh, including the, the Jilin, Heilongjiang and the Liaoning province here. So here the circle is uh, the scape we are the contact of the EEN 
in China. And uh, second, this picture show you the consult team of uh, our organizations. Here you can saw the NTEM here. We are, here. We are the top co coordinator of uh, our organizations. And uh, the second is uh, TDA TPC. They focus on the business information exchange platform. Another partner is the TTIBI. They focus on the innovation in incubators. And last is the HAECPA. Uh, actually, they are providing their you know, business information support on their members. Okay, here is the organization of our consulting. We go to the next page. Yeah, uh, here I will uh, go into more details uh, introduction of the NTEM. So we are a national level technology transfer organizations. Uh, we, we are in Tianjin province and uh, founded in 1995. We provide a service on technology transfer and uh, technological commercializations. We provide solid resources to the corporations. And here is the one pictures show you there's uh, three parts. The first is a uh, TPN, we call TPN. It is a technology providing network. Uh, our TPN composed of over 300 members, including the research institutes, universities, and technology-oriented companies across uh, more than 25 provinces and cities in China. So this TPN is a providing network for us. And the second will be the technology seeking network. We call them TSN. Uh, in TSN, we have more than 140 members and uh, technology transfer centers. Uh, it was made up of the uh, the company and the high tech uh, research center like this. They are located in over 20 provinces in China. And uh, the third network is the cooperation network. It's very important because uh, it's a link uh, between the two part network. Uh, this cooperation network consists of uh, various international uh, technology transfer partners uh, also, it was uh, includes the, the venture capital companies and also the accounts, the law, service, and also the IP support. Okay, uh, this uh, the the my the picture here, and uh, here the picture show show you the service we can do for you. Yeah, here is the key service. Uh, what we can do for the use me. Uh, the first will be the business matching, making service, and uh, technology intermediary service, and also the IP and the investment invest investigation, and also the accounting service. Okay, uh, so about the first service here, the matchmaking. Yeah, uh, we will uh, support you. You know. Uh, if you have some, you know, request uh, for your maybe your technology uh, want to come into China, we will provide you the matchmaking meeting and uh, negotiations with the local company or partners. We will support uh, provide supporting to make you know uh, the partnership happens you know, by providing various uh, service. 
And second is a tech knowledge related. Uh, for this part, we, you know, if you have any, you know, technology offer or technology seeking, yeah, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, uh, notice us. We will uh, collect the request and uh, do uh, evaluation and also spread in our network, you know, the three network here, just I mentioned, the TP, TSN, and also the Capture network. So we will uh, certainly, we, you know, uh, most of them will be get feedback, you know, and uh, to support you to your decision in further. And also the third part will be the IP uh, consultant and the investment and the calling service. So we will uh, providing, you know, this, this uh, service also uh, we can do the investment and the product market research and the evaluations and also we can support you if you uh, establish uh, any you know agency or manufacturing in, in China yeah. so about what I mentioned is uh, what we can do and uh, who we are here oh here's a uh, EN network northeast China activities we uh, we organized you can see uh, the first will be the in 2012 years November, the EU China Tianjin Technology Based Enterprise Cooperation by and the inaugurations ceremony for EN members. Yeah, this is a picture. Yeah, many people here is the first training event in Asia uh, in 12 20 years. Yeah, this uh, this ceremony was hosted by EA. CI and uh, organize the bars. Yeah, here's the uh, four pictures show you you know uh, what we did you know in in past two years. Yeah. Uh, the first here is a mission for green growth to China as I'm much making in July of the 2013 years last year. Yeah. Yeah, we organized and uh, uh, almost 28 companies, you know, in our range, to attend this uh, matchmaking meeting. Yeah, with the EU SME, and total uh, 63 matchmaking face-to-face -face meeting was held. And also, uh, we hold the International Technology Transfer Conference in Tianjin. Uh, we uh, cooperation with the Ita Italy company group and uh, uh, in order to fit their request we select uh, 15 local companies uh, to attend the meeting because right now in Tianjin uh, after you know fast development there's very big problem you know on the pollution I the watch the earth pollution so here's a very big challenge for us uh, Actually, uh, there, maybe there are some op opportunity here. Yeah. Okay. So up to now, uh, twenty offers and the profile uh, we received, and we are working on it to find the related, you know, correct uh, partners. And uh, also, there are the three partner agreement we have been, you know, finished and reached. And also there are uh, 10 offers still under negotiation you know, between the partners. Yeah, that's the result of uh, what we achieved in past years. Okay, so uh, the above is uh, what, uh, who we are and what we do and what we did and hope we can you know, have more and further cooperation with you. If any question, here is my contact information. Yeah, you can just uh, email to me or uh, call me. It's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Eric, for this interesting uh, presentation. The Northern Technology Exchange Market is a good partner of the USME Center, and we are definitely looking forward to to have more more activities. So our second speaker is uh, Mr. Bon Liederman, the regional manager of German Chamber of Commerce, and his presentation will be more about like a general introduction of Tianjin, 
and then we will foc he will focus also in uh, in what are the opportunities and challenges you you can find in this very very interesting city uh, so I will let him to do an introduction of himself okay thank you very much Javier for the introduction um, Good afternoon or good morning also from my side. It's my pleasure to introduce Chen Jin um, to you. Before doing that, just a few words about myself. I have been living and working in Greater China since 2005, completed my PhD in Chinese studies and have been working for the German Chamber, for the Chamber office in Tianjin since 2012, um, supporting our member companies in Tianjin by providing networks, providing information, organizing um, many chamber events per year and also um, maintaining and attending ne extending networks to governments, to investment zones and different partners. So I believe um, these networks and contacts might help today to give you an overview of, um, t of Tianjin and also answer your questions. So, well, before we, we start with the, with the presentation, uh, we want to ask you a, a question. And it's like uh, we're gonna launch a poll. Is uh, which sector are you more interested to do business uh, in Tianjin? We will like uh, we have different options. One is food and beverage, healthcare, ICT, green tech. And you, if you are interested in other, please let us know. Uh, with this poll, we would like to understand what is the the opportunities, what are the business you are you are looking after. So we will let a few seconds more uh, to get more answers. And. Well, we will close uh, now now the pool, and uh, we see. Well, it's interesting. We these are the four sectors that we have identified at the at the USME centers where we think there are more opportunities, and we have also more interest from European SMEs. And we see, like, yeah, these four four sectors have most of the companies interested. Is it's, I think it's uh, interesting to see also like uh, a more more or less half of the companies are interested in the green tech but also of course there are opportunities in the food and beverage and, and ICT so uh, well I will let uh, now again the word to uh, Ms. Bourne and, and keep on with the presentation okay yes very interesting results and I will go a little bit more into detail um, especially regarding the green tech industry um, later on so today's agenda, I will start with the introduction of Tianjin and then go into detail regarding the major development zones in Tianjin, um, followed by an overview uh, about the opportunities for European SMEs in Tianjin. And at the end, I will sum up why Tianjin might be better or at least different from other Chinese locations in China and, and might be suitable for your business or investments. All right, um, this is the introduction about Tianjin, primarily focusing on the economic field. Um, I'm pretty sure you're more or less familiar with um, the economic history of, of China with the growth centers. The economic reform and development started in the Pearl River Delta in the 1980s, then moved north to the Yangtze River Delta. And especially since this century, we can see um, the Bohai Economic Rim region um, as a third pole of um, China's growth centers. In the center of the Bohai Economic Rim region is um, Tianjin and um, the structure of the economy in North China um, focused much on heavy industry and state-owned enterprises in the past but especially since 2003 since the central government decided to revitalize the North the economic structure of um, North China changed um, the goal was the reduction of state enterprises, strengthening of the private economy, a more diverse economic structure, and greater investment, especially FDI in that region, and that was quite successful in Tianjin as well. Let's have a closer look at the Bohai Economic Rim region. Here you see different cities and provinces. Um, you can see that Tianjin is located right in the middle. At, um, at the ocean, so the harbor in Tianjin is the largest port in North China and you can see that strategically Tianjin is very convenient located um, 
as a gateway to Beijing. All right, before we go into detail regarding the economic structure of Tianjin, I would just like to say a few words about its history because it's very interesting actually. Um, Tianjin is often referred to as Shanghai of the North because it has a long history of international trade. The port opened uh, for trade in 1860 already and um, that's why Tianjin has a lot of modern um, culture, a lot of westernization, modernization as well and there's a list of about 100 number ones of Tianjin. That means um, things where Tianjin was the first city in China to have, for example, postal service and airmail delivery, telegraph line, the first modern university um, has been uh, established in Tianjin, the first aircraft engine, for example. So Tianjin is a city that also looks different. There you can see one picture on the slide. It's a colonial style European building. And Tianjin has nine different concession areas from nine different countries. So if you walk through the city center, um, you actually see many of these European style buildings and that makes the city um, very different from, from most cities in China. All right, let's focus on the economy. Um, Tianjin is the fourth largest city in China with about 40 million people. It's one of the four Chinese municipalities directly under the central government after Beijing, Shanghai and Chongqing. Um, the city center from Beijing and Tianjin are located about 120 kilometers away from each other and Tianjin is the industrial center and economic engine of the economic uh, of the Bohai region. Let's have a look at the GDP growth. In 2013 it was 12.5 percent. It slowed down a little bit. Um, over the past years it has had the highest growth rates in whole China um, with about 16 percent but 12 um, percent or 12.5 percent is still um, far above the average of China which is seven point something so the prospects are still very um, good in Tianjin. Here you can see two tables on the left side it's the real GDP growth and on the right side it's the GDP per capita. Here you can compare Tianjin and the national level. Tianjin is the blue line and the national level is the gray line. Um, I would like to focus your attention, attention on the year 2005. We can see that after 2005 the gap between Tianjin and the national average um, became bigger and bigger. Many people say it's because Wen Jiabao, the former premier of, of China, uh, came from Tianjin and after he took office in 2002 he promoted Tianjin very much. He introduced reforms in Tianjin which um, came into effect about in about 2005 and after that Tianjin has um, developed very dynamically. So we can see Tianjin compared to the other coastal cities is a latecomer we can say but it has developed um, very good after 2005 especially. Well, thank you, Born. Now uh, I'm, I'm going to stop you again because we want to launch uh, another pool. And uh, now we're going to ask you, like, uh, what do you, if you uh, know before today's presentation about Binhai New Area. So, of course, if you didn't know at all, you can tell us. It somehow sounds familiar. If you knew it's it's part of a uh, Tianjin, or if you were really clear about what's a uh, Binhai New Area. So well, we are asking this question because actually Binghai New Area is, is a key, is a key re development area for the Chinese uh, Chinese government. The central government has has uh, dedicated, put a lot of effort and support to this uh, to this uh, to this area. So now we're closing the the pool, and we can see like well, for some people it was familiar. Uh, actually, 38 percent of you like never heard about Binghai New Area, and and as you will see now from a Bjorn Lindemar presentations you will see it's a definitely like a very interesting uh, place to, to get to know. So uh, please go ahead. All right, 38% said they don't know uh, Binhai New Area at all. So I would like to give you an introduction of that area. All right, here it is. Um, the Binhai New Area is this part which you can see here 
um, between the city center and the coastal line. Um, Binhai New Area is the largest investment zone in China in terms of GDP output, which was more than 800 billion RMB last year. Um, it has 125 of the global Fortune 500 companies and it accounts for almost 10% of China's total FDI. So looking at these numbers, you can see it is um, the very big but also very successful um, investment zone in China. And actually in the Binhai New Area, there are different investment zones included, like the TIDA, also a very famous investment zone in Tianjin, the um, port zone, also the airport zone where Airbus, Airbus, for example, is located. So there are different investment zones in the Binhai New Area, um, which has been very successful. As you can see, um, it's only 13% of the population of Tianjin, but the GDP accounts for more than 50% of the total Tianjin GDP. And um, the advantages, um, which we can see here, is especially the geographical location um, right at the international port, um, the economic growth in Tianjin and North China, and it has a very convenient infrastructure, which I will introduce to you in a minute. First, let's look at the economic key sectors um, in Tianjin. As I said before, it focused on um, heavy industry especially, um, but since a few years we can see a civil aviation center, aircraft and logistics is very important um, due to the airport, but also especially due to the um, investment of Airbus in Tianjin, telecommunication, biomedicine, biopharmaceutical, new material, new energy, services and financial center, these are the um, industries that Tianjin is focused on at the moment. And of course, Tianjin is a major center for all kinds of manufacturing. So we can, we can summarize that um, Tianjin does not only have small or big companies, it's a very diversified economic structure actually, and it's also therefore a very um, good place for SMEs to invest. Um, let's have a look at the infrastructure. I mentioned the international port already. It is one of the largest in China and the largest in North China, the gateway to Beijing, um, with a high capacity of cargo and um, container. The, um, we, we, there's also an international airport in Tianjin, um, but I guess the most important um, infrastructure, um, the most important um, way um, to, to connect to Beijing is the high-speed train. Um, which was opened a few years ago. So between the 120 kilometers from Beijing to Tianjin, you can uh, travel that distance now in about 30 minutes. Um, it's very fast, about 330 kilometers an hour, and um, it integrates both regions very much um, and, and helps, helps the economy in, in the whole region. Um, on a personal note, I have to say, normally it takes more time um, to go from the train station to wherever you want to go in Beijing because of the traffic um, compared to the only half an hour train from Tianjin to Beijing. There are also very good connections um, to other cities in China by train and also by highway and the subway, the metro line, um, there are four lines now and another eight lines under construction are planned. So the government is investing um, quite a high amount of money in infrastructure. Um, another part of infrastructure are international schools, hospitals, hotels, shopping malls, restaurants, and so on. And um, also here we have to say that, especially during the past few years, Tianjin developed very dynamically in that regard. We can see quite a number of international schools, um, also international hospitals like the United Family Hospital. Um, Tianjin and Shenyang, these are the both cities with the highest increase in five-star hotels and shopping malls in whole China. So also here you can see that um, if you're searching on the one hand for your own opportunities to, to stay in Tianjin, but also um, for maybe business opportunities, for example in the food and beverage field regarding shopping malls, interest, international restaurants and hotels, there are opportunities. And last but not least, um, Tianjin has a major 
convention center, the Meijiang Convention Exhibition Center, where you can find a lot of trade for fairs um, throughout the year. All right, then let's move to the overview of the development zones and industrial areas in Tianjin. I will introduce the major industrial zones to you. Of course, there are many more, um, but I think the, the selection that I made here, these are the most important development zones. And here, I think this is a very useful map to see the locations and to already see some of the advantages or disadvantages of some zones. Um, the two zones which are close to the city center, here, Beda and Sida, of course, they profit from the close location to the center. Um, Wuching, on the other hand, is very close locate, located to Beijing. Here would be Beijing. So if it's, it's right in the middle between Tianjin and Beijing, and the high-speed train which goes from here to Beijing has a stop in Wuching. So this is a very um, big advantage of Wuching area. And airport zone and Tida, they are both located in the Binhainu area, which is the green colored zone. Um, so they have the advantages of the airport here and the international port here. All right, I will move through these investment zones um, a little bit quicker because I think they are all um, actually very professional. They all do offer many in incentives for European SMEs and it um, mainly depends on your own uh, focus and on your own negotiations um, where you would like to invest and what incentives you can get. Um, but I would like to make a short introduction. TIDA is um, the most successful investment zone in Tianjin and it has been elected as the best national industrial park in whole China for 14 consecutive years. So um, there you can see that um, um, TIDA does offer a very professional service. There are more than 5,000 companies registered at the moment. Um, I can highly recommend this investment zone for its service. On the other hand, European SMEs also have to ask um, if it makes sense to go to such a big investment zone, for example. Um, TIDA is in a very favorable position because uh, TIDA is almost fully occupied and they can choose which companies they would like to accept for, for investment. And um, of course, they would like to choose um, highly promising um, companies in, in fields which are like developing very quickly, which have a, have a high uh, turnout. So um, if, you, if you decide for TIDA, I think it it's, would be important that you can convince them that you will develop very quickly and successful. The airport zone, as I said already, the big advantage is um, the vicinity to the airport and also to the airport fac uh, the Airbus factory. So if you are a supplier or a sub-supplier of Airbus, this might be um, the best location. Um, also for all companies who are in the fields of logistics. And they are establishing an auto manufacturer park, um, um, which um, is also quite successful. There is a big investment of Volkswagen or VW at the moment in TIDA. And many investment zones try to focus on the auto mobile industry, on the suppliers and offer manufacturer parks in their development zones. Wuching area, um, I already mentioned that the excellent location between Beijing and Tianjin is their biggest advantage. Moreover, um, there are rather low investment costs compared, for example, to TIDA and, and the Binhainu area. Um, there is much space for development and I think it's um, one of the most promising um, investment zone for the future. On the other hand, since it is still develop, developing, you have to take into consideration that there are not as many five-star hotels, for example, or um, international schools, or it's not easy to find um, taxis, for example, compared to other investment zones. Um, I also would like to mention the EU park. There's a park for European companies which um, focus on biomedicine, advanced manufacturing, and new materials. So this also might be an opportunity for European SMEs. Um, then I would like to talk about the two zones which are close to the city center. One is here, Beichen, and the other one is here a little bit south, 
as a sheeting zone, SIDA. Um, both um, offer also very good conditions to SMEs, I think. Beichen is a high-tech uh, industry park and a pharmaceutical and medical device industry park. So if your company um, is in that kind of industry, that might be interesting for you. And also Xiqing um, offers, for example, a German SME park with preferential policies. I'm, I'm sure European, all kind of European companies would be welcomed um, in the same way. Um, and if I talk to, to managers from, from companies, from SMEs in that zone, they are actually very satisfied because they um, feel welcomed and they feel important. And it's easier to feel important, for example, in the teaching zone and to get more attention uh, compared to bigger investment zones where most of the Fortune 500 companies are located. Last but not least, uh, Tianjin Center is not an own investment zone, but it's certainly interesting for um, especially service industry, um, but also finance, all kinds of business and commerce. Um, then this would be the location to invest. Um, and there's actually one industrial park also in the city center. It's called the Tianjin Binai High Tech Industrial Development Park. And there they have a focus on science, IT, green energy, R&D, and also finance. You can find a lot of wind power um, companies there, for example. Um, so this is actually um, also a, a park which can be recommended and which is very professional. Um, if you invest in the center, for of course, you, you need to bear in mind that um, costs might be higher for rent, but also for staff. Okay, let's um, talk about the key sectors and opportunities for SMEs. Actually, the selection was not very easy because I think that Tianjin does have a lot to offer for all kinds of industries, but I've chosen um, four industry, industries which I think are most important. Manufacturing, environment, and environmental technology. So this is actually a green industry, what most of you mentioned at the beginning. Um, healthcare and service industry. Um, the big majority of international firms are still manufacturing companies. Um, also, for, for the companies that I support in Tianjin, 75% are manufacturers. So it's still the big majority especially in the field of machinery and equipment, electrical equipment, um, automotive, of course. So <clears throat> um, there are many different clusters, and there are suppliers needed, and there's also consulting needed. Um, these are definitely fields where European SMEs might um, think about um, investing. Um, then all different in development zones have incentives and preferential policies for manufacturing companies and offer different clusters, either regional like EU cluster or industrial like an automotive cluster. And I would like to give two examples, um, automotive and aerospace. The, the two big companies or two of the big companies in the Binhai region, Volkswagen and um, Airbus, they of course um, attract a lot of investment and a lot of suppliers and many development zones offer preferential policies and good investment conditions, especially for these suppliers. Yeah, green energy, environment. Um, many of you were interested in that, so um, I would like to go into, into detail regarding this topic. Tianjin actively promotes its image of an eco-friendly city. So wherever you go, if you, if you talk to government officials, they always mention um, support for low emission industries, um, the image of an eco-friendly city, of different projects. Um, one very hot topic during the last years was uh, wind power. Um, there are a lot of wind power um, companies in Tianjin like Vesta, Skamesa and, and Siemens. And um, it's not only wind power. Wherever you want to invest and you, you um, have green energy, green technology, um, where you can, can can offer sustainable growth. Um, Tianjin is very welcome to, to these kind of industries. Um, I give you one example. The second three-year program of the EcoCity construction was um, decided in 2011, and um, there's a huge amount of money, 25.4 billion uh, RMB, invested in different projects, especially in that field. Um, you might have heard about the Sino-Singapore 
Change in Eco City. It is a um, governmental project between the, uh, the Chinese and the Singaporean government on an area of eight square kil of eight square kilometers. Um, it is like uh, a role model for energy saving, green technology, and livability. And um, the goal is in 2020 to have a population of 3,000. Uh, 350,000 people who live in that area and um, who live green energy. I also would like to mention the TIDA Eco Center. This is a center inside the TIDA investment zone which promotes um, green technology which has, has different training projects. And these are only a few examples of many projects um, that um, the government um, introduced and I, I believe whatever you might be interested in in this field, green energy, um, you would be very welcome. So um, you're, you're welcome to, to introduce um, your own project and see which government or which development zone might be most suitable for that. Um, healthcare is also a very um, hot topic in, in Tianjin at the moment. If you visit investment zones, all investment zones, tell you there's a medical park or a biomedicine park. Um, there are also many um, incentives for, for, for this area. Um, just li let me give you one example. In Lingang, which is close to the international port, um, there um, is a plan to establish a Sino-German medicine and biotechnology park. Um, key industries are biomedicine, medical equipment, and modern medicine technology. So in this park, you can not only produce, but it's also um, a park which um, promotes research and development services. Um, and I believe that there are a lot of opportunities also in this sector. Last but not least, um, I would like to mention the service industry. Um, the service sector is quite strong in, in Tianjin, almost 50% of the total output. And um, there are many of many different services that I could mention. I, I just concentrate on a few because, um, for example, you said that food and beverage are important to, to most of you. And um, um, you probably heard a lot about the, the uh, scandals, uh, the issues with, um, for example, milk powder in China. And so there is always a big um, space, a big space for development for also European SMEs to um, to invest in China in that in that um, area, um, since there are so many shopping malls, hotels, restaurants, etc., they do need foreign products, and um, they also have a very good reputation. Um, I think everywhere in China, but also in Tianjin. Um, Tianjin is a financial center. There's actually a very long history of finance services in Tianjin because the city opened so early to to the Western world. Um, of course, all kind of consulting services. Um, are welcomed. I, I personally think that there is a lack, still a lack in Tianjin of professional um, international consulting services, but also all kind of other service industries um, might be might be important in, in Tianjin because Tianjin has developed very fast during the past years, especially the manufacturing companies have developed very fast, but the service industry needs to um, to cope with that, with that speed and um, see it. so um, I do believe that there are a lot of chances in that field as well. Why Tianjin? Let me sum up some of the most important points that make Tianjin different from um, other cities in, in China. First of all, I think the biggest asset is the geographical location of Tianjin. Um, I mentioned already it's the economic center of the Bohai Rim region. It's uh, very well connected to um, cities in that region, but actually to whole China um, by highway, by airplane, um, by train, and also by ship. Um, it has the biggest international port in northern China, so all regions are convenient to reach, especially also northeast China, like Japan and Korea. And um, very, one very big advantage in Tianjin is that qualified staff is easier to find compared um, especially to the other growth 
regions, growth centers like Shanghai or the Pearl River Delta. Um, most uh, employees in Tianjin companies are actually from Tianjin. So if you compare that with Shanghai, I think most workers do not come from Shanghai. They go to Shanghai because of work. But in Tianjin, we can see that um, most people come back from wherever they are to Tianjin um, because they would like to live and work in Tianjin. Tianjin people are more family oriented so um, because there's not so much fluctuation. L salaries are lower in Tianjin and employees are more loyal um, compared to other cities. They stay in the company for a longer time. You know, everything has advantages and big advantages. Um, it's definitely good that employees are as loyal as they are here in Tianjin but on the other hand um, you will probably not find as active um, employees compared to Shanghai that like to take um, the initiative. So um, people here in Tianjin are more family oriented I would say. Um, yes, the infrastructure I mentioned already. Um, I do see that the integration with Beijing but also with the whole Bohai Rim region um, um, moves forward very quickly at the moment and I think Tianjin will be even better connected in the future and that is um, one of the big advantages in Tianjin um, especially compared to the west of China for example where investment costs are also very low but where um, the infrastructure is not as well established as in North China. Um, here are a few points about the future of Tianjin. I do believe that uh, the potential for economic growth is there and that uh, Tianjin will continue to grow at very high speed, at very high growth rates. Um, and also the environment um, is, is very suitable for that. For example, there are enough um, sufficient natural resources um, in that region like oil and gas reserves, sea salt and so on. We have a very high number of graduates from university schools and vocational colleges um, from Tianjin but also from Beijing and other cities in North China. So I believe that um, finding stuff is not as difficult as in um, other coastal cities in China. Um, as I said, the government likes to promote Tianjin as an e ecological, environment friendly city. In this area there's a huge potential for growth. Um, then Tianjin is not fully occupied yet. There's further land available, especially in, in investment zones, for example, like Wuqing, which is located between Beijing and Tianjin. There is um, plenty of land available for all kinds of projects for investment. Um, so I, I don't see any problems in that regard. And Tianjin also applied as another free trade zone. Um, you probably heard that um, Shanghai was granted as um, free trade zone free trade zone last year and everyone is everyone is very curious about the result and the impact on Shanghai and Tianjin already applied for for being the second free trade zone in China. Um, there are unofficial news that um, it already has been granted the status of a, of a second free trade zone so we are also very curious how that might influence the uh, um, international investment and the economic development of Tianjin but all in all I would say um, that the prospect for growth in Tianjin is um, very high and investing here might um, be a good good choice um, also for European SMEs. Well thank you very much Evon, for your presentation I think that's that's a very good overview about the Tianjin and the opportunities you might find so I'll encourage uh, all the participants to ask us uh, questions, and we already have uh, quite a few. I, I would like to start uh, for, uh, with one question from Eric Han, and one of the participants asked us if the Northern Technology Exchange market offer matchmaking opportunities for international education uh, business. Mm -hmm. um, hello, Miss um, Eric. So normally we NTEM focus on the technology transfer uh, field. So there's not very directly, you know, you know, the relationship to the international education, but 
we have uh, some related resources partner you know, in our network. So it will be better if you can share us more information on this request. You can send maybe the information to my email or to the uh, use me. It's okay. Well, thank you, thank you very much, Eric. Also, following that question, I would like also to give us also some examples about, in specifically, what are the services the Northern Technology Exchange market can provide yeah. to uh, to European SMEs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we focus on, you know, normally focus on the technology trans uh, transfer. Uh, for example, for some science, uh, or some, you know. Uh, for the medicine, there's a new, you know, uh, maybe new uh, medicine and some new technology in the manufacturing and something like this. Thank you very much, Eric. And now we have some questions also for Born, and we will start with this. someone ask us uh, which types of German SMEs have already invested in, in Tianjin. Yes, thank you for the questions. Um, um, actually, many different German SMEs have invested. The total number of, of German companies in Tianjin is uh, more than 150, and most of them are SMEs or the German what we call Mittelstand, so SMEs or maybe a little bit larger um, or, than SMEs, but um, we see more of these Mittelstand companies compared to really big or Fortune 500 companies in, in Tianjin. Um, to mention a few, Talk, for example, the, firma, uh, the, the company Talk Technologies is located in Tianjin for um, more than 50 ye 15 years already. Um, MCAR is another company, um, it's a typical SME, and um, they are actually um, in whole Tianjin. So there's not one investment zone that I can pick to say the German SMEs are located in that investment zone, but they're actually located all over Tianjin. And um, you asked about the types. Well, as I said, 75% of them are manufacturing industries, and most of them um, mechanical manufacturing, machinery, electrical manufacturing. Thank you, Born. Uh, we also have another question. It's uh, related to the development zones we, you had, you've been speaking about. So uh, our participants want to know what, what kind of uh, <coughs> specific benefits they, they, these uh, this, uh, development areas offer and if they have, for example, like tax incentives. Um, yes, they do have. Um, they have, uh, actually have a lot of different kinds of benefits. Um, tax, tax incentives are probably the most, the most famous, the most prominent um, incentives, but also, for example, R&D incentives. Um, very hot topic in Tianjin at the moment. Wherever you like to invest in R&D, um, you will be able to receive a lot of incentives. Um, there can be incentives on the rent. There can be uh, the promotion of, of um, finding staff. There are many services. But um, I cannot give you a, a very general answer because it always depends on how, how good you bargain, how good you negotiate with the investment zone. So the investment zone, of course, have a, have a catalog with different numbers, but um, there are always negotiations possible, and you can actually um, get even more incentives than, than the normal catalog um, through talks with that zone. So I, I would encourage you to, to get in, in direct contact um, with them and, and to ask what they can offer. For European SMEs, um, they are very welcome because um, China thinks that the, the economic situation and the quality of European SMEs is um, very professional, very good. So they would like to welcome European SMEs. And if you would like to welcome someone, of course, you give them even greater incentives. Thank you again, Bor, for your explanations. Uh, I think, well, as this presentation will be later on uploaded on YouTube and it will be accessible through our website, you can see the different the different uh, development areas in more detail, and of course, if you're interested of any in any of them, you can you can make us an inquiry, and we will put you in, in direct contact with this with the development uh, areas responsible for investment. 
and the, the contact person that, that can be able to specifically help you. Uh, we have another, another question for Northern Technology Exchange Market and they would like to know uh, how, how the finance, if you, you help the European SMEs to find financial support to buy the technology. Hello, uh, this is Eric from NTEM. So normally uh, we will have the financial support team uh, of the 10 percentage of the technology transactions, but the up limit will be 500 uh, KMB. Thank you, Eric. So uh, I think we have still time for uh, for some more questions. So um, we have one question from uh, Jennifer, and she's asking if you consider uh, Tianjin as the growth center of, of China. Um, yes, definitely. I let me go back to the slide of the growth centers in China. I think it was one of the first. Here it is. Um, yes, I, I do see Tianjin as a growth center, but I do think we should not only isolate Tianjin in that area. The growth center is not only Tianjin, um, it is the whole Bohai Economic Rim region. Um, and I mentioned some data of, of the Binhai New Area, which attracts, uh, which is the largest investment zone in whole China, which attracts 10% of the total FDI in China. So um, looking at these big numbers, you can see that Tianjin um, is definitely a growth center and I believe um, it will not be the only growth center in China in the future, especially the West is catching up, but um, it will definitely be one of the major growth centers in China, yes. Thank you uh, very much. Also following in this, uh, in this inquiry, we are, we are this, this webinar series, we are going to also like uh, explain about the difference. For example, we are going to do a webinar in, in Changsha and also in Chengdu. These are provinces in, in the inside of, uh, of China. And of course, we believe Tianjin offer a great opportunity. It's the third, third uh, pole of, of development, but inside also the Chinese central government is promoting uh, a, lot of, a lot of effort to, to attract investment and to develop uh, those areas. So I would, like, uh, I would like to thank you very much for attending the, this webinar. I'm, I'm very sorry, but this, this is coming to an end. But uh, before uh, saying you goodbye, I, I would like also to mention for those of you in Tianjin that uh, tomorrow we will have uh, an event. You still be able to sign up if you hurry up, and it's a it's an event organized co-organized with the IPR SME help desk, and it's about drafting contracts in China do's and don'ts to ensure smooth running for SMEs. So you can look at that event in our website, and you can still have time to register. Also, our following our following a uh, webinar will be on March fourth and it will be using free trade zones when importing to China. I think another interesting topic. And finally, for those companies that in the ICT sector in China, on March 5th, uh, we, have, uh, we are organizing a, a matchmaking event in the framework, in the framework of uh, Cloud China 2014, which is another uh, interesting opportunity for ICT companies to look for partners and potential clients. So again, thank you very much for attending uh, our webinar. We look forward to, to have you again with us. Thank you.